pocha pumpkin is something that I love to eat, but I'm always intimidated to cook it because I don't know how to cut it and mm. I don't know how to select it. So mm. can you show us a recipe that includes kabocha pumpkin? Yeah, we're going to do uh, a, a braised kabocha pumpkin and we're going to do it with a soy, sort of a soy ginger broth. And I'm going to get the broth going so that it can start to simmer and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to work with the, the kabocha pumpkin. But anyway, I'm going to put in some... Uh, this is brown sugar we're going to put in. I'm throwing in some chicken broth. This is meat in. And then I have uh, chopped garlic that's going in. Mm, Show you. Already. That's all going to go in there. And now I have ginger that's going to go in. One thing, before we do the kabocha, I wanted to show you something, something about something uh, about the ginger, as far as working with ginger, because I think, I mean, in Hawaii, we are, I think we're all used to working with ginger. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're not familiar or working with ginger, this is, the, uh, this is what the ginger looks like, right? And it mm -hmm. has the skin on the outside. And a lot of people try to figure out, you know, how do I deal with the skin? And what I wanted to just show you real quickly is when, when, you, when you're working with ginger, the easy way to peel it is just with a spoon. And if you just come in, because the skin is very soft, you can just go ahead oh, and very I always, lightly peel it. I always it. use something like this. Yeah, and so, you know, see how, by I'm doing that, see that. how you're really getting oh. all of this, the ginger, and you're just getting the skin off. Ooh. So, you know. That's so much easier. Real easy, quick trick that you can do to, to work with your ginger and really get a good yield out mm. of it. Mm. And uh, not waste, yeah. So, yeah. see how, just this very little skin. Oh. Okay, so that's, that's how you're going to do your ginger from now on, or just... Uh, Hire a prep cook, I guess. So that's the ginger thing. One more thing I want to put in here a little bit is I want to put in a little bit of... I, the recipe calls for yuzu or a mixture of lemon and lime. Now, yuzu is an Asian citrus. Mm -hmm. And the best way that I can describe it is it sort of has a lemon and lime flavor. So if you don't have access to yuzu juice, and yuzu is, can be a little bit expensive, you can get a very good result by just using lemon and lime. And that's something that, you know, a lot of people have at home, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, while the flavors are coming together, let's work on mm. the kabocha. I have one that's cut in half already because we're just going to work with a half right now. But essentially, yeah, okay. that's the whole thing. But how did you know this was the right one to choose? I went to the store and I took the first one that was on the shelf. <laughs> I mean, as, really, as, as far as... It's not, I mean, picking a kabocha is not, this, it's not as complicated as like trying to pick the right melon, or et cetera. Okay. So what I like to do when I'm in the store is I basically look for a size that I think is right for what I need it for. So mm -hmm. I'll pick a small one if it's just me and my wife. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing something for a group of people, I'll pick a bigger one, okay? So, and then sometimes I just go buy a half, just like this one here. Oh. So just pick the size that works for you, okay? okay? Now, a lot of people will, will actually use and bake and cook kabocha with the entire skin on it and eat that. And you, you can, can do skin. it. You can. can eat the skin. But what we're going to do is I want to just kind of peel it a little bit because while you can, I think for me, I like it a little bit, a little bit more refined um, eating experience. And so I want to start this and I'll let you finish. But basically all you're going to do is take a peeler here and you're going to run it on the outside. I wanted to actually watch you cut the... I will cut it. You're going to peel this first. Oh, okay. So take the peeler like this and go around it. And really, you're gonna you're gonna peel off parts of it. Not all of it's Not gonna come it? off. Oh, okay. But you're gonna just get some of it off, and some of it will stay. Okay. And, and it's okay to see green like this. Okay? Oh, okay. So you can you can artfully. But if you can eat it, why do you have to peel it? Uh, let me see. I'm gonna try. Let me think of another example. Do you ever peel an apple? Peel the skin off of an apple. Mm, okay. Or you don't need the orange peel. You know what I mean? So. It's it's sort of it's sort of about. But you I mean, can't eat the orange peel. You can. Oh yeah, yeah, zest. Okay. But I mean, so it's 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 a, it's sort of a, a, a decision. That's a preference, you know. Like okay. When I'm in fresh, when I was in a French restaurant, I would peel the asparagus. I'd peel all the celery, because we didn't want all that heavy fiber in there. Okay. So, you know, can it if you want? You can. If it's a hassle, you don't need to peel it. Now I'll just show you one more thing too. Now so you're doing actually a very good job. I know it's it's a little tricky, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scoop some of this, the, the insides out. And the insides are great. You know, you can dry this out and roast the seeds, and you can use the seeds like, you know, pumpkin mm, seeds. Mm -hmm. But Salad. I know that, it, I noticed that you were, it was a little, it, you have, it's little, the pumpkin is, 
not working with you right now, right? A little bit. So really I'll show you another simpler thing that you can do real quick. So I'm gonna take the pumpkin here. Now you can go depending on the peeler too. I mm. gotta. This isn't my best peeler. Mm -hmm. If you have a really good peeler, you can do what I was talking about. Another thing you can do is I'm gonna cut a little bit of this now. I'm just gonna cut straight down like that. Let me just go this way. So here. Cut slices like that. So this is this is the part that I wanted to learn. You need a really big knife, a really big heavy knife. Right? You need a good knife. One of the other things you wanna have, let me just cut this stem out. Ugh. One of the things you wanna have, or what helps too, is that you can use a serrated knife mm -hmm. and the serrated knife will help cut through it. Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. okay. So, I'll so just do you prefer that? Do you prefer the serrated knife or the heavy Usually knife like this what I'll do is I'll use a serrated knife to cut it in half first mm. and then I'll go into a knife like this. But what I, what I, the reason I'm showing you this too is now I'll give you these slices. Oh, okay. Now it's and easier. It should be easier. You can just oh, kind of break yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. More yeah. leverage. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just show you it real quick. And it's, as usual, not going to cooperate with me either. But so you just kind of go through like that. And again, Leave a little bit on, nice color, give you a little texture. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, you can finish those. Another thing that sometimes people do is they'll just cut it in half, scoop it out, cut it into quarters, and just bake the whole thing like that. So, I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can approach, you know, how you're going to work with this. But in this dish, we're going to cut slices, and then we're going to slowly simmer them in the broth, and then it'll all come flavor together. Let me, show you, let, me, let me get it real quick. One thing you can do too is hold it like this. Mm -hmm. Hold it like this. Mm -hmm. Put your thumb mm. in here and hold it. And it's almost like you're pairing it. It's like you're, like you're pairing it. So you can use your thumb as the control and the, and the leverage oh, okay. on the pumpkin. Kind of go like that. Oh, okay. okay. Try that. I have plenty for you to practice on. Okay. By the time we're done here, you'll be like <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's so much easier. Yeah. Is it? I like that thumb. The tip. thumb thing? Yeah, the thumb tip. So remember the thumb tip when you're doing this, okay? Now what we're doing is we're actually going to, we're, we're going to, this is going to be a braise. So what the braise, right, is, is, a, is a smaller amount of liquid that's mm -hmm. partially submerging a large piece of an item. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's going to be the kabocha. And then we're going to slowly cook it till it's tender throughout. And then we'll let the flavor go in. Now, we're going to make this and then we're going to taste it. But one of the things that... Uh, I like to do is make it ahead, make it the day before, let it sit, and then all the flavor will come together nicely in there. Mm. Kind of marinate. It's like how mm. stew, you know, stew tastes yeah. better the second day. While you're doing that. This is so much work, actually. I, I wish I could just cut the skin off yeah. instead of peeling it. Sometimes the good stuff takes effort. <laughs> I, I mean, I know, it's, I, I'm totally with you, but it's like. You know, like if you just got the knife and cut like that. You could do that. I'll show you how to do that too. But then you, I'll show you how to do that. But then you're gonna. It's about Oops. yield. Yeah, you're gonna. You 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 might not get the same yield. And I'll show you that. Yeah, too. but it might be worth it. In the long run, right? Okay. So here I'm gonna put some green onions in there. So you can do this if you want. Okay. Paring knife. Is this what mm -hmm. you're talking about? Yes. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Something like that. You could do that. I'll do the paring knife version real quick. Just that my, my, when you use a paring knife, you're going to cut more off. Mm -hmm. Put that in here. Look at that or this. Actually, these look really good. You're doing not, fast. Yeah, but this, I think this is not the sharpest. It's the peeler. It's the peeler, everyone. <laughs> the peeler is okay. not that sharp. So yeah. we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to finish these last couple pieces. I'm going to put it in the pot. I'm going to bring it up to a simmer, cover it. And we're just going to cook this until the t it's just done and it's fork tender. And we're going to come back and it's done. Super fast dish. Wow. Okay. This, we'll is the, this is the part that takes the longest, actually. It's always the prep that takes the longest. So we'll be right back. Okay, so we had this thing, covered it. We brought it to simmer, very low simmer, just so that the flavors can all come Smells together. Smells really good. And wow. What happens is as it is slowly simmering, it's slowly reducing. So we have almost like a glaze that's made. Ooh, and, and now, all the sauce soaked into the pumpkin? The sauce goes into the pumpkin and some of it also, you get some reduction as well. So, it, that, so what's left now is the flavor 
of the broth and the shoyu and all in the in the the citrus and then mm. because of the sugar as well it creates sort of that shiny glaze uh, mm. dish so I'm gonna put this out here now this is a great side dish this is something you can eat by itself you can actually eat it cold room temperature or hot um, how do you know when it's done that it's not too hard but not too soft what you want to do is is you, you can start to see that if you look here here's a good example here you can start to see that the color and it's changing right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's starting to look a little transparent mm -hmm. but also what you can do is you take the cover off you push it with a fork mm -hmm. and when it's tender then you then you know it's done when you can push the fork in yeah exactly so I'm gonna put some here put on the plate finish this up here wow. now I made big pieces I like big pieces mm. and I like to I like to use my I like knife and fork kinds mm. of dishes but you, you could, could come smaller if you come smaller they'll cook faster mm. so just remember that okay and then you know just put a little bit of the this is all the flavor right here it's got the ginger it's got green onions in there Looks. put that all in here wow that's nice and then if you want, sometimes, you know, I'll just put a little bit more shoyu on there. I like to finish with, you know, I'll mm. just refresh it up with just mm. a little bit of the lemon and the lime here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just to brighten the dish. It'll take some green onions. Take a couple of these green onions here. Just do a quick slice here. And then that's really the dish. I mean, again, it's, what, what was it? It was the, the, there was a little challenge. It was the peelings a little, takes a little work. But other than that, I mean, it was really, easy. really simple mm -hmm. dish. And, you know, if you want, you can start experimenting. You can, you could put little pieces of chicken or, or pork in here and sort of you have a, a an actual mm. entree. You can put some seafood in here. Mm. But, I mean, real simple dish. Wow, that's Packed pretty. with flavor. Do you want to try some? That looks healthy. Here you go. Here, I'm going to take a small piece Me in the too. back here. Take a small, it's hot, be careful, it's hot. But here's our braised uh, soy ginger braised kabocha pumpkin. And I'm going to go for the bite. Oh, oh it is hot. <laughs> oh, it's flavorful. But hot. Mm. You can taste the ginger, mm -hmm. garlic. It's got that sweetness, it's, but it's cut by the acid in the, uh, the lime juice, oh, really right? Very good. The shoyu flavor, and then I use brown sugar instead of regular white sugar mm. so that you have a little bit more of that um, caramelized flavor in the dish as well. <laughs> so there's our dish. For more recipes like this, visit us at foodland.com.